that y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you and those around you as well. I pray that your mental health gets better, and I also hope that you all have a blessed day today. Uh, let us thank God for giving us another day. Let us thank God for having clothes on our back. Let us thank God for protecting us in our travels, in our day-to-day life, and our running errands or work or school, whatever we're doing, whatever activity. Let us thank God for the roof over our head. You know, we have to be more appreciative and grateful of things. You know, so much going on all four corners of the earth, so much going on in your personal life and maybe someone else's personal life. So we have to be more compassionate, have more kindness, have more patience and gentleness and love. Uh, when we're dealing with one another nowadays, you know, things are very intense, so we have to be very delicate with one another. Amen. So let's just praise the Lord and just give him all the glory, honor and praise. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to just stop what you're doing and just give him some praise. You know, just call on his name, sing a new song or what have you. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome people, family. Greetings, shalom. All of you people, man, body of Christ, what's going on with you all? Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for supporting. I truly appreciate all of you, all tribes, all nations, all peoples, all tongues, all languages, all faces, all races, all four corners of the earth. Whether you are an Israelite or a Gentile, or whether you are chosen or adopted, it is all right. Let us praise the Lord together. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Let's gather and always fellowship. It is beautiful to see people unite for the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us let us love the Lord our God for all of our mind, heart, and soul. Let us love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Let us obey the law, statutes, and commandments. Let us obey the gospel and know the Lord better. Let us do Father's business and Father's will for the rest of our lives until his son comes back. Amen. Let us always keep our hands on the plow and keep constantly putting the work for the kingdom some way, somehow, always putting work for the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Now, today's message, we are going to continue the Bible series reading, all right? We finished off at the book of Job, chapter 4. Now, we're going to continue from Job, chapter 5, and onward, all right? So, yes, yes, y'all, we're going to go through this. Then we'll close out with a prayer. We'll close out with giving all the glory and praise to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise the only begotten so to die for our sins. And then we'll also close out with the priestly blessing, all right? Yes, yes, y'all, let's stay strong. Let's hang in there, people. Let us trust in the Lord forever. Amen. All right, y'all. He will do the healing. He will fix that situation. He will help you. He will help that person. He will do it. All right. Things like a bit crazy, but we have to walk by faith, not by sight. All right. Our sight, what we see is going to always make us feel disturbed or excited or feel some type of way. But that faith and knowing the Lord and trusting in him and knowing what he's able to do, knowing how worthy he is, knowing that all things are possible with him, you know, we know the Lord will do it for us. Amen. So let us stay in alignment. Let us be obedient. Let us stay faithful and patient. All right. As we endure what we're enduring. All right. So the book of Job, chapter five. Here we go. Call now if there be any that will answer thee. And to which of the saints will thou turn? For wrath killeth the foolish man and envy slayeth the silly one. I have been the foolish taken root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation his children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate. Neither is there any to deliver them, whose harvest the hungry eateth up, and taketh it even out of the thorns. And the robber swalloweth up their substance, although affliction cometh not forth out of the, of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth, and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointeth the, the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward, is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in a noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor hath hope and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty, for he hath maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. 
He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yet in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Lo this, we have searched it. So it is, hear it, and know thou it for thy good. So that's the book of Job chapter 5, reading. That's his friend, you know, comforting Job and, you know, giving some wisdom and poetry all in one. You know, praising Worshiping, poetry, those things lighten the heart in hard times, all right? So the rest of the way of Job, you're going to kind of see Job and his friends kind of go back and forth with poetry and questions and giving God, giving God all the glory and praise even through it and going back to him, all right? And the sorrows of life or the sadness and the darkness of it, but also the good of it and parables, proverbs, poetry, all kind of mixed in one, you know what I mean? So that's how they coped with dealing with hardships in that time period. And you still should to this day. You should always cry out to God, do poetry or music, something that where you can pour out your heart, all right? So now we're going to go to the book of Job, chapter 6, and continue, all right? Job, chapter 6, here we go. But Job answered and said, Oh, that my grief were truffly, through, throughly weighed, and my calamity laid in the balances together, for now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore, my words are swallowed up. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, the poison whereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Doth the wild as bray, the wild as bray, when he hath grass, or loweth the ox over his fodder? Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? The things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat. Oh, that I might have my request and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. Even that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. Then should I yet have comfort? Yeah, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help in me and is wisdom driven quite from me? To him that is afflicted pity should be showed from his friend, but he forsaketh the fear of the Almighty. My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook and as a stream of brooks they pass away, which are blackish, blackish by reason of the ice and wherein the snow is hid. What time they wax warm, they vanish. When it is hot, they are consumed out of their place. The paths of their way are turned aside. They go to nothing and perish. The troops of Tama looked. The companies of Sheba waited for them. They were co-founded because they had hoped. They came thither and were ashamed. For now ye are nothing. Ye see my casting down and are afraid. Did I say bring it to me or give a reward for me? of your substance, or deliver me from the enemy's hand, or redeem me from the hand of the Almighty. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words, but what doth your argument reprove? Does ye imagine to reprove words in the speeches of one that is desperate, which are as, a, which are as wind? Yeah, ye overwhelm the fatherless, and ye dig a pit for your friend. Now, therefore, be content, look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie. Return, I pray to you, I pray you, let it not be iniquity. Yea, return again, my righteousness is in it. Is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? So that's the book of Job, chapter 6, reading, where Job responded to his friend. Now we're going to go into the book of Job, chapter 7, to continue onward. The book of Job, chapter 7, here we go. Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of an hireling? 
as a servant, as a servant earnestly desireth the shadow, and as a hireling looketh for the reward of his work, so am I made to possess months of vanity, and where are some nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise, and the night be gone, and I am full of tossings to and fro until the dawning of the day. My flesh is cloth, clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is when mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thy eyes are upon me and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house. Neither shall his place know him any more. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a sea or a whale that thou settest a watch over me? When I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint. Then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions so that my soul chooseth strangling and death rather than my life. I loathe it. I will not live away always. Let me alone for my days of vanity. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him and that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every mo every moment? How long wilt thou not depart from me? Nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle. Have I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee? O thou preserver of men, why hast thou set me as, as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I shall sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. So that's the book of Job, chapter 7, reading. And Job is going more into detail about his, his hardships and what he's dealing with, and his sorrows and his sadness and how to go about life. So sometimes life will do that to you. Sometimes you go in that low place or a dark point. You kind of get sorrowful about it and wallow in it, but you have to hang in there, be patient, and trust in the Lord through every circumstance, all right? Now we're going to go into the book of Job chapter 8 reading, all right? The book of Job chapter 8, here we go. Then answered Bildad the Shahite and said, How long will thou speak these things, and how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doth God pervert judgment, or doth the Almighty pervert justice? If thy children have sinned against him, and he have cast them away for their transgression, if thou wouldest seek unto God betimes, and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee, and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall not they teach thee, and tell thee, in other words out of their heart? Can the rush grow up without mire? Can the flag grow without water? While it is yet in its greenness and not cut down, it withereth before any other herb. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish, whose hope shall be cut off, and whose trust shall be a spider's web. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. He is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about the heap. And seeth the place of stones. If he destroy him from his place, then shall deny him, saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers, till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. That's the book of Job, chapter 8, reading about his friend Bill Dead and things that he's saying. Now we're going to go to the book of Job, chapter 9, as Job responds. All right, the book of Job, chapter 9. Here we go. Then Job answered and said, I know it is of 
I know it is so of a truth. But how should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of the thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered, and has prospered, which removeth the mountains and they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble, which commandeth the sun and it riseth not, riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Arcturus. Orion, at Pleiades, Pleiades, and the chambers on, of the south, which doeth great things past finding out, yet and wonders without number. Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth on also, but I perceive him not. Behold, he taketh away. Who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What doest thou? If God will not withdraw his anger, the proud helpers do stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him and choose out my words to reason with him, whom, though I were righteous, yet would I not answer, but I would make supplication to my judge. If I had called and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened to my voice? For he breaketh me with a tempest and multiplieth my wounds without cause. He will not suffer me to take my breath, but filleth me with bitterness. If I speak of strength, lo, he is strong. And if of judgment, who shall set me a time to plead? If I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Perverse, Though I were perfect, yet would I not know my soul? I would despise my life. This is one thing, therefore I said it. He destroyeth the perfect and the wicked. If the scourge slay suddenly, he will laugh at the trial of the innocent. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked, he covered the faces of the judges. Therefore, if not, where and who is he? And who is he? Job chapter 9, verse 24. I want to repeat that. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covered the face of the judge thereof. If not, where and who is he? Wow, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. And it kind of goes to correlate, uh, I think, in the book of Corinthians, the New Testament, where it says Satan is the god of this world. Um, and what that term means is like this 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 system this money system the people who like rule these big companies uh the fallen angels all these secret societies all these government people all these evil top people um they're all under like satan's umbrella and then when you read job chapter 9 verse 24 it discusses that the, the earth has been given to him the wicked and it also goes back to uh, genesis where the fallen angels the sons of god have went down and impregnated and um, procreated with women of the earth and created Nephilim and uh, produced giants. So all these things kind of go hand in hand. It's all connected in some way, somehow. But that's how evil, wickedness, all those things uh, play out, you know. But when you read Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, it does say that's got, that God creates the good and the evil. So he controls the peace and calamity. So that just shows that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and the father's in control at the end of the day, you know, so Satan has to go to and fro, bounce around because he's not all knowing. He's not of the almighty. See, you try to be like him, but he can't. And it goes back to Proverbs saying there's no wisdom of counsel against the Lord. So the evil doers, the wicked, they just have to be adversaries and just cause chaos as much as they can because they know their end. They know their doom. They know they're going to go to the lake of fire. They know they're going to go to hell at the end. So they want to just cause up as much chaos as they can right now. And it goes back to the book of Proverbs connection where it also says that God created the evil for the day of doom. So it, 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 it's all connected with the Old and New Testament about this. But Job chapter 9 verse 24 really stood out to me. So I want to repeat that one more time. Job chapter 9 verse 24 The earth is given into the hand of the wicked He covereth the face of the judges thereof If not, where and who is he? Now let's continue from 25 and onward Now my days are swifter than a post They flee away, they see no good They are passed away as the swift ships As the eagle that hasteth to That hasteth to the prey If I say I will forget my complaint I will leave off my heaviness and comfort myself I am afraid of all my sorrows. I know that thou will not hold me innocent. If I be wicked, why then labor I in vain? If I wash myself with snow water and make my hands never so clean, 
yet shalt thou plunge me in the ditch, and my own clothes clothes shall abhor me? For he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him, and we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any daysman betwist us between us that might lay his hand upon us both. Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his fear terrify me. Then would I speak, and not fear him, but it is not so with me. It's the book of Job chapter 9 reading. Now we are going to go into the book of Job chapter 10 reading, all right? The book of Job chapter 10, here we go. Job chapter 10. My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thy hands and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Has thou eyes of flesh, or seest thou as man seeth? Are thy days as the days of man? Are thy years as man's days, that thou inquirest after my iniquity, and searchest after my sin? Thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Thy hands have made me a fat, have, have made me and fashioned me together round about, yet thou dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay, and will thou bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured out, poured me out as milk, and curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and hast fenced me with bones and stones and sinews. That has thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. And these things that thou hid in my heart. In thine heart, I know that this is with thee. If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. I am full of confusion, therefore see thou my affliction. For it increaseth, thou huntest me as a fierce lion. And again, thou showest thyself marvelous upon me. Thou renewest thy witnesses against me, and increased, increasest thine indignation upon me. Changes in war are against me. Wherefore then hast thou brought me forth out of the womb? O oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no by and no eye had seen me. I should have been as though I had not been. I should have carried I should I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease then and let me alone, that I make that I may take comfort a little. Before I go whence, I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. So that's the book of Job, chapter 10 reading. So Job, Job is continuing more and more about a situation, how he's feeling deep down the side, and crying out to God and seeking him and pouring out his heart. And the book of Proverbs says, keep your heart with due diligence so that it springs out the issues of life you know so if you have something on your heart always let it out always have a platform to let it out and let it not be in a negative way let it always be in a way of praising and acknowledging god and fearing him and singing a song or poetry or some type of expression that's not hurtful to yourself or anybody amen so let us always keep our heart with due diligence amen yes yes y'all all right, y'all, so there you have it. We'll just wrap it up from there with that. Um, just the book of Job, chapter 5 to 10 reading. All right, we'll continue the Bible reading series on another episode. We'll just leave it at that for now, all right? So that's the message for today. That's the word, all right? What I would love to do as I close out is give all the glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins. Amen? Yes, yes, y'all. All right, so here we go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is the Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam, the hope for humanity, the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega. Amen. The almighty, true and living God, the apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God. The beloved son, the blessing only potent, the blessing only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone. The captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, 
wonderful counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom. Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, the king of Israel. He is a king of kings. Amen. He is a king of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. The king of saints, the king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the lie of the world. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, 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 Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim, Yehosha, Ahai, Yeshaya. Yes, yes, he is the sustainer, the sufficient one. He is the great physician, can heal all things, the carpenter, can fix all things. Now that's too hard for the Lord. He is the name above all names, the God of heaven and earth. Yes, yes. His son sits at the right hand of him. Amen. The government rests on his shoulders. He is the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my salvation, my my fortress. Amen. My tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. He is my deliverer, my redeemer. Yes, the man of man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God, and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the resurrector. The revelation, the revelator, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the radiant one, the perfect example, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon. Hosanna, Hosanna, the ruler of God's creation, the rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessing of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one. The one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. He is the way. Amen. The way, truth, and life. The wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of Yah, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of Yeshua, the word of Yehosha. Yes, the word of life. He is the word of Yahuwah. Amen. Yes, yes, we touch and agree, y'all. Yes, we serve an awesome creator, and the Son is amazing for dying for our sins. Yes, yes, his son is so awesome. We can boast in the Lord. Amen. He is a seed of Abraham, promise, the seed of Adam, humanity, seed of David, kingship, seed of God, deity, seed of Jacob, nationality, seed of Judah, tribe, seed of Shem, race, seed of woman, prophecy. Yes, yes, y'all. In the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, renewed, restored, redeemed, delivered, forgiven. For Yes, you are loved, embraced, favored, merciful. New mind, new heart, new soul, new hands to prosper, new footsteps on a narrow path, blessed feet. Yes, yes, new light, new season, new open doors, new opportunities. Yes, yes. Prosper and flourish in the name of his son. Amen. Yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. Let's stay strong and stay in there. All right. So there you have it. All right. That is the reading for today. Just the book of Job chapter five through 10 reading. Just a reminder that when you go through those challenging moments, you know, you have to call on the Lord and trust in him. That's what everybody did. That's what Jesus did, Job, Daniel, Abraham, Jeremiah. They all called on him, man. That's what we have to do, amen? Yes, yes, y'all. So I just pray to God that whoever listens, man, I pray that you repent and get baptized. I pray that you deliver. You get delivered. I just pray that you have a new mind, a new heart, a new soul. I just pray that you change your ways. You have a new new habits, new routines, a new way of approaching life, a new attitude. Your, re your mind is renewed in Christ. And I pray that you do the will of the Father for the rest of your life. And as you prosper and flourish for the rest of your life, and I pray that you stay steadfast in the Lord and stay faithful and committed to him and his word. And I pray that you could repent other, uh, make other nations repent and get baptized, baptize other nations, healing, casting out unclean spirits, all of that. Oh, the Father's will, Father's business, do it for the rest of your life. Spread that gospel, spread that word. 
help as much people as you can along your journey. Amen. God is not finished with you. All right. He's not finished with you at all. Always remember that. All right. So I love to do is give you all this priestly blessing on the way out. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.